Hi, I'm Joanne. And I'm Phil. And welcome to our vlog called RVing, RVing and, and seeing. seeing. The RVing part is us learning what it's like to live in an RV and learning from our mistakes and sharing them with you so hopefully you don't make the same ones. And the seeing part is uh, us you know, going to different parks and visiting new places and eventually our trip to the East Coast and the West Coast of Canada and uh, everything we discover along the way. So, let me show you inside our RV. Follow me. Hi, welcome to our RV. It's a Fleetwood Bounder, 2005, 36 feet long. Let me give you a tour so you can see what it's like. Over here is the cockpit. And what's nice about this are the seats are so comfortable. Um, it, they tilt back so when you're driving long distances you can snooze. What I like just for me is I can just sit here and just put out my feet and just relax, read. I love it. It's also got a workstation if I need to do writing and lots of storage space here too so it's very handy. And Phil really likes having everything very accessible to him. There's a backup camera which is fantastic to have. Um, there's also the blinds that are automatic and close in for that privacy at night. And as you can see, we do have a TV. There are two TVs in this unit. We installed both of them. And it may sound kind of strange when you're out in the great outdoors to have a TV, but it's nice to be able to, to catch the news when you're away, especially um, what's going on in the world today. And also, you know, for those rainy days. And we don't get a lot of channels anyways. You can see there's tons of storage here, which comes in handy. And we've tried to find a place for everything. Um, and put it in the right place mm -hmm. so that it's easily accessible. Up here, there's another store. Oh, here, this is our aerial right here. And this little sun is on here that reminds us that the aerial is up because you don't want to drive away and have your aerial up or you're going to lose it. So that's a reminder that before we uh, take off, that needs to be turned to bring the aerial down. Okay, and over here, this is a nice feature. It pulls out and it's fully reclinable. I'm not going to do it right now because I would have to move it out a bit. And um, it's also, it's, there's a little table back here that you can't see, but if you wanted to turn these two chairs around, and these chairs will turn around so that you can sit and visit. Now, of course, when the slide is out right now and it looks, it feels very roomy, especially since there's only two of us that are using the unit uh, on a regular basis. Of course, we invite family. But when the slide comes in from the table to the couch, it comes in right to where the carpet is. We have here our leather couch, which folds out into a double bed, which is quite comfortable. Um, here we've got more storage. Because there's just two of us, as I've mentioned, there's a lot of storage facilities that we don't really need to use. Oh, that's our snack cupboard. We better keep that closed. Right over here is our eating area. And this also can turn into a bed. The table goes down, it's lowered. The cushions go in. So it may be a little small for two adults, but certainly for children or for a teenager, it would be just fine. So again, more storage space here. And there's also more storage space underneath each of the benches, which is handy. And here's our kitchen area. And I really like the double sinks. I'm happy with the prep area because I can also pull this out if I need to for prep area and also use the table. 
But a lot of the stuff I try to I try to bring ready made. For example, I wouldn't attempt to make a salad here. I either buy it pre made or else I make it at home and bring it. So we're quite happy again with the storage. We've got. I find with um, an RV because it's moving down the road, things need to be in baskets for the most part. And I'll show you a tip for dishes. All right. What I do, and I've taken them out, I just get these little shelf liners from the dollar store and I cut them up and I put them in between the dishes so that they don't rattle. And once we arrive at our destination, I can take them off and just toss them up there so that it's you don't hear the dishes rattle back and forth when we're traveling because that can be really annoying. So that's our kitchen area. We've got the three burner propane stove, which works fine. There's also a propane oven. Lots of storage space here. And the convection microwave, which is used a lot. You can even uh, bake in this convection oven, but as of now, I, I haven't had to do that. We're really lucky that we have a full-size fridge in this unit. Two double doors in the bottom. Again, I've used containers like this to stop food from sliding back and forth as we're driving. And it's made a big difference. You don't want to open up the fridge when you reach your campsite and have everything fall off, fall out. So that's made a difference. And of course, lots of freezer room up here with an ice maker which comes in handy. So you can see there's not a lot of food because right now we're just here for a weekend, but that's okay. So let me show you over to the rest of the unit. Come on in. We really liked the storage space in the bathroom. You can see there's four drawers here. That gives us lots of space. And we really like the double mirrors and all the storage space up here. And you can see we've also done the small container trick so that things aren't rattling back and forth and falling out as you open the door. We've put um, shelf liner on the bottom so that those containers stay put too. So far we haven't had any surprises when we've reached a site with uh, material falling out. And our shower is quite roomy as you can see. It's got uh, of course a fan. What we might consider replacing is the original shower head just to get a bit more pressure and update that. But uh, yeah, our toilet of course. It is so nice not having to go to a porta potty in the middle of the night. Come on and I'll show you the bedroom. Again, this unit has a slide. When this, the slide is out right now, of course, but when it comes in, it comes in to about right here, about two feet away from the window. So there's still room that you can walk here and get to some of the cupboards. But there's lots and lots of storage space here, as you can see. So we're really happy with that. There's six drawers. There's also storage space above the bed that we don't use because, again, there's just the two of us. But it's a queen size bed. It's very comfortable. And I really like the pocket door, which you will notice behind you, that can give you that privacy. In the evening, you just want to shut it away from the rest than you can. So that's really a nice feature. And if you look above you, you'll see that, yes, we have a second TV in this unit. But it's just such a treat to just be able to lie in bed on a rainy morning and watch a bit of TV if, if, if you need to. And behind these doors here, is a little was a little surprise for us 
there is a self-contained washer and dryer. We've used it on a few occasions, but right now we haven't been away that for long of a period that it's been necessary. But it's, it's just nice if you want to dry some towels up or there's something that has a stain on it that you don't want to wait till you get home that you can wash it and dry it. And that's in great working order. So that's been a, a bonus. This space right here is where the old TV used to be. And it would come out a little bit of an angle, but it was a really old TV and it just wasn't really in a good position for anyone to view it while lying in bed. So my husband, who's very handy, um, took the TV out of there, rebuilt this door, and of course replaced the TV here. So now this is a very handy cupboard for us to keep our linens in for the um, the, the, the couch bed and the table that converts into a bed. So that's really handy. This cupboard here, that's just the electrical stuff that I don't know that much about, but it's right there handy for us. So let's go back out to the front and I'll tell you what kind of motivated us to buy an RV and how we feel about using it. Go ahead. Did you want to talk about all the technical stuff, even though it's pretty boring? Well, we can't. We can get into that in another video. Pretty boring. That's the interesting part for the guys. No, it's not. They want to know about the toys in here. No, they just want to drive it, okay? Well, they do that too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they care. It's pretty scary driving this thing. I can't watch Sometimes it. Sometimes it can when, be. I can't watch them back it up in our driveway. There's a pole there. It's. I just, I can't look. <laughs> he does a really good job. Of course, he does drive a truck pulling a trailer with a bobcat on it, but I've got absolute confidence when he drives. It's so relaxing, and part of the reason is that he drives very slowly. In the well, RV. In the RV, he drives slowly, and he doesn't tailgate like he does when he's driving my car. <laughs> so it's a very relaxing drive. Plus, we try, to, we try to take the back roads when we can, just so we enjoy the journey rather than, you know, trying to go through Toronto and rush hour traffic. So this was quite a journey, us even reaching a decision to buy yes. an RV. Uh, we've only been married not quite three years yet. And we were originally thinking, we'll postpone our honeymoon and maybe we'll go to Florida. My husband and I are avid birders. My husband's also um, an excellent photographer and he loves to shoot birds and Photograph. hockey. Photograph, we don't shoot birds. <laughs> well, not with a gun, with a camera. <laughs> But then when we were looking at how much it would cost us to go for a week to stay by the water, because I love to be by the water, it was just ridiculous. It was like $2,000 and up Yeah. for one week. Which... Yeah, that's not counting airfare. Um, well, for us, it was getting away whenever we wanted to. Uh, we could hop in this vehicle and take off on short notice. And if I have a few days off and it fits and the weather's good, we could go wherever we wanted to, like we did this weekend here. Um, it just happened to work out that Friday I was off, so we took off and went away for the weekend. It's only about a 45 minute drive from our house, but... We really do like to have that quiet solitude just to get in touch with each other too, because you know what it's like with two couples working that you're you're really busy and sometimes you don't really get that quiet time to just sit and talk and having a campfire really I, I think just going to say really... that the campfire sitting around in the evenings yeah. and the lawn chairs and stuff like that yeah but we do like being close to nature we love to bike and mm -hmm. hike and we did some kayaking today so yeah. that's a big part of it too is enjoying mm -hmm. nature and getting back in touch with it yeah. now one of the reasons we picked a class a motorhome over something else um it just worked for us we like the big view out the front window it just 
really fit, this particular RV really fit us very, very, very well. I can go to the bathroom whenever I need to. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but okay. <laughs> there that's, you go. That's that's a plus. No, that's a plus. I can't, I can't drive and go to the bathroom. clean, okay? Yes. yes, that's a huge bonus. It's nice because it allows us to invite our family and friends to join us for a day or to, to bring a tent and to camp if they, they want that experience or to come and join us in the RV. So we can't do that if you're going away for a week in Florida unless no, the whole family the can afford else, to go. So, so this yeah. is just uh, a lot more yeah. doable. And the well, other... That's, that's I was going to say that's our short-term plans. The long-term plans is to eventually maybe head south for a month or something like that in the wintertime. But mm. first we're going to go to the East Coast. East Coast and West Coast. And the yep. West Coast. Yep. Because I would like to see more of Canada. And Phil was born in Nova Scotia. Yep, never been back. And the one thing we really want to do is is see the Cabot Trail. Yes, if you're not Brunswick. familiar with it, it is it was about five and a half hours, I believe. Um, you don't want to drive it in an RV. It would be very scary. It's very hilly and curvy and everything. Um, you want to enjoy it. So you either tow behind a car behind the RV or you rent a car down there, which is, I think, probably what we'll end up doing. So we didn't want to bore you with the first uh, first couple times where we were busy just learning the RV and making little mistakes and stuff like that. So now we've got it sort of down pat. I have the time to relax to start shooting video because I sort of have to learn this. I'm a photographer, not a videographer, so this is all new to me too. But and it so. will be nice to have a record of our, of our yeah. trip too. And we wanted to show, I have family that uh, live in England, so it's nice to be able to reach out and yep. show them what our experience has been like. So we hope that you've enjoyed our first vlog and um, we'll yeah. subscribe. And we'll keep them coming. Yep. And some will be more technical for the guys. Like, for instance, I got lots of plans for in here. Already done a couple things with the TVs that Joanne was mm -hmm. telling me about. But there's solar, um, long term solar plans in here that will sort of blow you away, hopefully, because we're going to take it to the extreme. And uh, we hope you enjoy our tour. We'll see, you, we'll see about the cost of that solar first, okay? <laughs> we're saving for our retirement. Yep. So we can go someplace. Yep. All right. Yep. That's it. We'll see you later. See ya. Bye. Bye.